Welcome back, young soldiers in Christ. Um, hope you had a start of a good week. Um, we're still in lesson uh, unit um, success strategies. Okay, and right now we are is study 18. Okay, so um, always want to thank Israel. Um, my right hand always um, disciplined, uh, on track, on schedule willing to give the class and help out in the ministry god bless you always my brother still on the battlefield okay um and train this next young generation to come up in the ammunition of the lord amen brother all right um so yeah, i'm excited for this class today uh it's a good class i hope you studied it um we're gonna get um i'm trying to with the help of the holy spirit um enlighten you um and just uh, help you without, without what you already have. I'm just going to try to share um, what God has given me in this study, okay? Um, I, I love the study because it really demonstrates um, working and laboring um, in the kingdom of God and the things that we need and how we need to do it and where our help comes from to do it, okay? So that's what we're going to be learning today and discussing today in this beautiful class. So first of all, the most important thing Let's go to the throne of grace and ask God to give us the wisdom and understanding, okay? God, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord God, because truly you are faithful. You have all authority in heaven and in earth. You are the ultimate authority, God. There's no other authority uh, except your authority, Lord God. And you delegated authority, God, even to those who are not saved, Lord God, that we set up governments down here, Lord God. And God, we just pray. You ask us to pray for the leaders of this country, this nation, Lord God. Oh, God, so we just ask you right now, God, to help us to understand um, what it is about your authority that you give God, for your kingdom, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your spirit and truth, God, always enlighten us. Ask you to open our minds up, God, that we may receive what it is that you have for us today, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. We thank you, and we honor you, and we bless you, because truly you are worthy, and you only to be praised. Amen. All right. Study 18, a delegated authority, okay? Um, first of all, delegated, okay? I just want to um, share that with you. I know you guys are sharp, you know, your minds are sharp, crisp, just getting out of school, some maybe still in school, um, but, and you and you know the vocabulary of these words probably better than I do. Um, I got to get so many car wheels off and, and prepare a lot. You guys don't got to prepare, you guys just, your mind is already wake up sharp, young, young mind, okay? I know I'm young too, but still, you know, you know what I mean. So anyway, delegated um, means giving, okay? Um, sharing, um, it's, it's like um, one, one, one good example is you don't have to be there, okay? If somebody who, who, who have authority or, or ruler, is i'm gonna use an, an ambassador for example right now before we get started reading okay just so we can see what direction we're going in in this lesson okay an ambassador uh let's say for the united states uh is sent to another country okay now that ambassador is is representing the united states even though he's not in the united states he, he he's in another country but he's representing the United States. So the United States is backing him. So the United States um, delegated authority to that ambassador to act as he was making decisions um, for the United States, okay? He represented. And so that's what we, the, that direction we're gonna be going in our class today. So we're gonna be like, um, where are we going? What direction are we going? Uh, if dealing with the, the the working and laboring in the kingdom of God, okay, and that's very important because it just like the ambassador, we are ambassador for Christ, okay. So we represent Christ, okay. We represent the kingdom of God, and so on. And that is, is a big responsibility, and so that's why God Jesus came and, and on his earthly ministry, you know, he called um, those twelve disciples to train them and get them prepared. Um, for for this uh, mission and uh, that he had for them and to establish the early church and, and grow the church, you know, 
and expand the church and, and, and he had to equip them because it's a big responsibility and he knows um everything what what they needed and what we need right now um to operate in the kingdom of god and operate um in the church um and like last week we learned from brother israel class uh, being um administrator you know um the church is a business it's a spiritual business okay and we have to take care of god's business and his kingdom uh, with the resources that he give us he is the source but he give us resources also so um so that's what we're going to be going at today dealing with um with this delegated authority that only comes from above okay um let's start out with scripture reading um in acts 4 8 it said then peter filled with the holy spirit said to them rulers of the people and elders of israel verse 9 if we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means he has been made well. 10. Let it be known unto you all and to all the people in Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands here before you whole. 15. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves. Verse 16, saying, What shall we do to these men? For indeed, um, that a notable miracle has been done through them is evident to all who dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny that. Verse 17, But so that it spreads no further among the people, let us severely threaten them that from now on they speak no more in the name of jesus verse 29 now lord look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness that we may speak your word verse 30 by stretching out your hand to heal and by signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant jesus our memory verse today is for god has not given us a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind we can find that in second timothy chapter 1 verse 7 god has not given us a spirit of fear but of power love and a sound mind or self-control our main idea um, is it is impossible to silence a young person who has been affected by the Holy Spirit. It is impossible to silence a young person who has been affected by the Holy Spirit. And the three goals that we're going to tackle today is to understand that God is one who gives the power and authority to proclaim his message. You hear that? His message. So he's going to give us what we need to work in his vineyard to to, to claim his word, his message, he's going to give us his resources, okay? So in other words, God is going to equip us when after he prepares us, he's going to equip us with everything we need. Amen. The second goal we're going to uh, achieve today is we're going to decide to trust and fully depend on the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, my intellectual, now the, the, the Pharisees, Pharisees, no, no leaders, not, no Christ word for yourself and we're going to fully trust in him or in the power of the holy spirit because the holy spirit is the spirit of truth and his job is to guide and lead us in all spirit and truth and bring back everything to remembrance what christ had told us in other words what we are read in the word when it's time to activate that word um, in every situation in our life, the Holy Spirit will help us regurgitate that word and bring it back to our forefront so we can remember exactly. We can remember the whole Bible. We can remember every teaching, every preaching through Bible study. We can remember every preaching on Sundays when we go and worship in the house of the Lord. But when it's time and the situation we find ourselves in, the Holy Spirit bring that word at the right time. And that's his job. And he does it very well very well so we cannot depend on our own way we got to trust in the lord with all our heart and okay and lean not to our own understanding okay but we got to trust in him okay fully 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 and it's a process 
to learn that to fully. I know sometimes we want to take the reins back from Christ and be trying to uh, work it out ourselves, but our intellect is not even come close to, to Christ's um, wisdom, okay? So the Holy Spirit, we got to depend fully on him and his power, okay? The third objective is that we're going to um, achieve today is we're going to share without fear the gospel of Christ with everyone. I'm going to read a little short commentary, okay, real quick. Um, the apostles' um, courage and the boldness affected the religious authority of those days, okay? Um, we got to understand when Jesus first called the, the twelve, um, these guys were ordinary men. They fishermen, tax collectors, all them. You know, Luke was a doctor. So you got they they, 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 were, they were ordinary men. Okay, um, they wasn't uh, religious leaders. They wasn't uh, in the temple. Uh, they they wasn't uh, brought up reading the scribe. You know, the scroll and 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 the law of Moses, the Mosaic law. None of that. They they wasn't even they wasn't trained. You know, they were Gentile. They was ordinary people. Um, and 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 and, and un, un, unlearned Jews, okay. I mean, this is a different variety, and and God knew exactly what He was doing when He chose the twelve. He He knew who He was choosing, okay. Um, they could they could not examine, explain. I'm sorry, they could not explain how these ordinary men, okay, who had not studied. In other words, they, they wasn't brought up at the feet of, of a prophet, of a rabbi, of a teacher. Every day, every day, um, reading the law, studying the law. No, they, they wasn't. They were bringing in big bass and brim, catfish. You know, some of them were stealing, do, do, uh, cheating, and, and robbing from the people and tax collecting and, and all of these things. Okay. And, but the thing that made the difference from once being afraid of the religious leaders and now speaking boldly to them is it, it, something happened okay and and, and and what happened was is that at the day of pentecost while jesus followers was praying all together no division in the room unity everybody has the same mind good god man you talking about a revival Man, we can get people on the same mind in unity. Oh my God, it's 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 that's what I passed over preaching last week. Um, the unity in the Holy Spirit, man. We can get in unity, good God, with the Holy Spirit. And the Bible said that that was a wonderful day that the, the church, the followers of Christ, were empowered by the Holy Spirit. Man, to other words, God, He set it off. He set the church off with, with fire. And, and and these same common men now it, it were, were once afraid and 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 truly they was unlearned and and, and Jesus had, had prepared them but he, but now he equipped up them now they equipped it good God they have the equipment that they need now and and the power okay and and that was the Holy Spirit that's why Jesus told them to wait 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 don't go out yet he said I know you. I know I taught you. I knew you. You saw miracles. Matter of fact, at one time, I, I, I gave you. I gave you this power for a period of time, just to go out, and I'm gonna show you what you're gonna be doing for this day forward. When he gave them the seventy, and he gave them power uh, over uh, uh, the demons and demonic forces, and, and over sickness, he gave them power over death. And he told them go out, raise the dead, heal the sick, clean the leprosy. Oh my God! Everything, you know, and and and, and, when, and when they came back, they were so excited, and, and and Christ told them, "Don't be excited and don't rejoice because the demons are subject to you." He said, "But rejoice because I have chosen you, and your name are written in heaven." In other words, you're going to spend eternity with me. That's what Christ said. That's what you rejoice. Um, it, it, it's good to be happy when we do a work for God. Oh my God! It brings some some fulfillment. Oh, when we uh, please our master by being obedient and, and working in their thoughts in the right way, not not selling God's gospel, not not trying to benefit um, or, 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 or monetarily on, on, on 
prayer or false prophecy or telling people something false that's not in the Bible that God said and you give me this money and I do it. No, when you operate, when we operate um, the correct way um, with wisdom, full of the Holy Ghost, um, then we please Christ. And even Christ said, there's something to rejoice about. For a man is no rejoicing like when you save a soul and lead somebody to Christ and the angels in heaven rejoices. I mean, that's that's the ultimate goal. You know, so it, it, it's beautiful. God got his kingdom set up beautiful. And, I, and it humbled me, man, just to be part of that. When I know that my life, how I lived before, it, it's, I mean, I, I don't even deserve it, you know, to even be named in the same breath as Christ. And, and now to be called um, an ambassador for Christ, you know, a royal priesthood, you know, a, a, I've been adopted in, I've been drafted in. Um, I have this authority that Christ has given me. You know, it's it's, it's tremendous to, to 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 work. It, it humbles me. I mean, really, it, it does. Um, matter of fact, it, it's, it's, I'm glad it does humble me because now I realize that I don't even deserve it. So, and the, the danger is when people think they do deserve it. But when you when, when you know you don't deserve nothing good from God, nothing because we sin against Him, we separated ourselves against Him. We we follow after our own heart, after our own desires and selfish ambitions and everything, and and and, and Christ still have mercy on us. I mean that should humble us instead of stroking our egos and saying, "Oh yeah, I deserve this." No, no, we don't deserve nothing good from God. So and and that should humble us um, completely. To submit to the Holy Spirit, and not to grieve Him, but to obey Him, you know. And many times we we because the Holy Spirit, I want to say, the Holy Spirit it, it that doesn't when, when the Holy Spirit comes upon us and God fills us with the Holy Spirit, it, it don't it, it don't like take control of us and and, and and make us like a robot and take no no. He, he, the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He, he, he's an inspiration. He, he inspires us, you know. It's up to us to, to 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 do it, you know. It's like going to get a job. I mean, or, or getting gas in the car. You know, we sit at the gas station, we put gas in the car, but it's us to it's up to us to start the car and put it in drive and drive off and go on a trip where we're gonna go. Just we put gas in the car, the car ain't gonna start by itself and just start driving. And we're gonna no no. So when the Holy Spirit man empower us, he, he what he what he's saying that he he he, he inspire us. Oh my God! To to, to go out and, and 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 accomplish these things what God said we can accomplish in His name. That's the beauty of it. That, that or being obedient. That's what the best daughter was she preaching. She said once we become in unity with the Holy Spirit, man. When we when we get in line with the Holy Spirit and listen, obey the Holy Spirit, man. You're talking about revival, man. This 120 that was in the upper room when the, at the day of Pentecost. Man, you're talking about a revival. Yeah, the Holy Spirit came and sat on them, and they said they had tongues of fire. You know, God was going to set the church on fire in the early churches. Yeah, because he knew the persecution was going to come, and they needed to be empowered so they wouldn't run, so they can stand. And so that's so that's the authority that Christ gives us in the in, in the, with the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we thank God for His authority. Okay. Three things that the authority did and that the Holy Spirit did uh, on, on Pentecost. It was a threefold, and I want to um, clarify this and it, through, the, through the study lesson. It says, one, it illuminated their minds, okay? In other words, it, it gave them a new concept of the kingdom of God, okay? Which was not a political empire, but a spiritual kingdom. It, it wasn't rain operated like, like, like down here. Where everybody greed and, and 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 everybody is is out for themselves and they just give orders and expect everybody to bow down even when they are not um, being responsible and using their authority the correct way uh, and and but what 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 the Holy Spirit did it gave them a new concept of uh, a new mindset of the kingdom of God. In other words, now they're gonna be ready to go preach. The same people that denied Christ. He's ready to stand up now and preach good God Almighty. He's ready to stand up and preach the gospel. Oh God, God, thank you. The second thing it did, it, it gave them a um he, he he gave them authority, okay? Giving each member a fervent of the spirit 
and the power of expression that made their testimony so convincing to those who listened to them. Mm. That's why when you testify to somebody and you preach, man, preach, preach, preach with, 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 with the conviction that God that, that, that God touched you and you and you fool, you trying to convince the people, the, the listeners, you know, that what you're saying is, is, is real. Not something that you heard or read about. No, that, that you actually experienced the power of God, the touch of God. You, know, you have to say it with, 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 with even though with a, lot, a, a small voice, you don't have to be a loud voice, but it's got to be convincing. It, 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 without a doubt, you know, you got to leave the person with their mouth open. Like, like yeah, have them thinking when they leave you saying, yeah, uh, it, you want them to say what, what the religious leaders say. Uh, when they were trying to accuse Peter and John, they said, what are we going to do with these men? It was a notable miracle done. We can't deny that. Yeah, that's what you want the people to say. Say, wow, his life has changed. We, we can't, or her life has changed for the better. I see Christ working in her. We can't deny that. But just so it won't spread no further, let's try to, to um, persecute them and, and threaten them because they know it was true. Man, they, when Peter started preaching, the gospel and the and the testimony, man. He's man. Before he was scared and denied Christ, and he was so ashamed. But oh God, but Christ knew what Peter needed. He knew that Peter he prepared Peter, but he didn't equip him yet. But when he equipped him, you know, with the Holy Ghost, oh, you couldn't you couldn't keep uh, you you couldn't even keep him quiet. But Peter, he was ready. You couldn't even keep him quiet. Amen. So all right, all right. That's. Let's go into um, our study development, which is uh, the first one is authority to heal the sick. Okay, we're going to find this in Acts um, chapter 4, verse 1 through 12. And the question is, how could Peter and John heal a lame man from, the, from, his, um, from birth? And how can we do it? Okay, is it uh, other words? Uh, what those things that were happening back then, those signs and wonders that that God was doing at that time through the name of Jesus, is it was it just in the in in the past, or is it in the present right now too, or will it continue to be until Christ come and wrap His church and and it, so so other words it, is only thing we got to look back to and have hope on is the past. Is Christ doing the same thing? Can we still use the same authority in the name of Jesus? Um, to, to heal and, and deliver and um, set the captives free, okay? Cast out demons. Uh, are these miracles of the dead being raised? Are these miracles still being done today, all right? By the power of the resurrection of Jesus, the first uh, persecution of the church started after a revival started with the miracle of healing the lame man at the temple, okay? Peter and John were preaching the gospel in Solomon Portico to a multitude that was celebrating the miracle when they were surprised by the priests and the Sadducees and the captain of the temple. Because you got to understand, the Sadducees denied the existence of angels. They denied resurrection. They denied the life after death. Okay. And they was into, uh, 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 how you say it, um, influent. There was affluent. They were um, intelligent and they were powerful men in Jerusalem, okay? They were like the so-called religious people today um, that stand out by their, uh, uh, I say, accolades, okay? Their, 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 their credibility um, on the outside, on their accomplishments, you know, they build their own ego up, okay? So they was angry against the apostle because they was announcing that Jesus had resurrected uh, from the dead and through his name why this man was this miracle was done and so now and and they and and but but peter and john was so convincing and they stood their ground that even those sadducees and religious leaders and the priests couldn't deny that that miracle was done i mean and and and, and they wanted to know and they asked the book by what authority could god <laughs> By what authority, and, and that's when Peter was start to preaching and be. By the authority of the name of Jesus, Peter and John actions frightened them religious leaders, most of whom were most interested in their reputation and the position 
than in God. Okay. With the help of the power of the Holy Spirit, Peter took advantage and exalted the name of Jesus and made it, who made this miracle possible bravely. Okay. Bravely. He stood up against these men, against these Sadducees, bravely with boldness. Not old scary Peter no more. No, now Peter is, is, is bold in the gospel. Peter is on fire right now. Instead of being behaving in de defensively, no, Peter was, was behaving. He was on the offense. In other words, he, he twists this thing around. Peter said no, so he, he wasn't the victim. He, he, he was he, he wasn't going to be the victim in this one no more. No, he remember that when when the car crew threw, uh, you know, and he denied Jesus three times. He remember that whoop, 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 all them came back because he won't ready. He won't ready. But now Peter is ready. And he's on fire, and the Holy Spirit has endowed him and empowered him. Now he's preaching the gospel, and convincingly that these men look at them saying, "How? What authority? You know, and man, it was so brutal." But Peter said, "Let me tell you. Let me tell you. It ain't got nothing to do with me. Matter of fact, I'm the least of the ones because I denied Christ three times." Okay, he said, "But by the name of Jesus Christ." Of Nazareth, whom you crucified, is why this man stand here whole before you today. Good God, and and they were pricks to their heart, and they were and and you know, and well, and, and it's a beautiful thing when 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 you can speak on speak something for Christ, and you know, like and before you like, man, I had people come to me to Christ, and I didn't want to hear it, and now I'm speaking. And proclaiming the same name in Christ, man, ain't that something? Man, it, it, it's beautiful because that's when you know when Christ is working inside you and changing and changing us daily. Okay, uh, he he he's conforming us daily to His image. You know, each and every day. You know, Sundays going to church, you guys going to practice during the week. You know, we're doing a Bible study during the week. Well, we could be doing some more things. You know. While other people in the malls or doing something else, um, you know, it, it don't matter what, what but we um, putting our attention on the things of the kingdom of God. And that's that, that's a, a telltale sign right there that God is conforming us. But don't get don't get relaxed. Your youth, man, stay be radical, you know, stay empowered man. find some radical brothers and sisters in Christ. And ask God to, to start working in you and more in you. I remember when some of you guys was on fire when I first started coming to the church. Man, you guys were young, you man. You you get the microphone up there and God was just using you. You were prophesying, you were proclaiming the name. I mean, with fire. And I was like, whoa. And I'm, you got 10, 11, 12 year olds. And I was like, man. And so, man, don't lose that fire. It's the same Holy Spirit that was inspiring you then. Don't resist it. Man, so if he calling you, whatever he calling you to do with the spirit of truth, it's to obey whatever it is, believe me, because he's the spirit of truth and his job is to lead and guide us to all spiritual truth and bring everything back to our remembrance, what Christ has taught us or what we have read in the Bible, what we heard in the preachings, okay, what we learned in Bible study. Like I said before the class started, is that every situation we find ourselves in, we might not understand we might not remember every preaching that that you heard. You might not remember every lesson that we went through this book and the other books before this one. But if in the right situation comes, the Holy Spirit will bring the back to remembrance those things that we have learned so we can apply it to that situation right then. Okay? Believe me, that's just how that's how it works. Two, the authority they had a so there was a, the first one was the authority to heal. Okay? Now the authority to preach the word of God, okay? Um, where did the disciples' authority to preach come from? And how can we get the same authority? A, they have been filled with the Holy Spirit. That's the answer. I mean, <laughs> they have been filled with the Holy Spirit. Four things are said about the apostle. First, their boldness. That is, that they talk with freedom, they talked with energy, and they talked without fear. Okay, strength did not come from them. It was from the power of the Holy Spirit 
that reminded them of the word of God and gave them a message. It reminded them. You see in the book? It, it reminded them. That's why I went trying to tell you the Holy Spirit inspires us. It reminds us. It brings things back to our memory that don't pertain, things that pertain to the Spirit of God and to his kingdom. Believe me, it, 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 that's, that's his job because he is the Spirit of truth. He will never direct you um, in false. He will never direct you to evil. He'll never direct us to do anything wrong because why? He is truth. He, period. You know, and that's their job to represent the truth. Okay. Now, two, they were untrained men without a formal education. They could not be compared to the scholars who were harassing them, and they had been trained in the school or rabbis. The apostles might not have been illiterate but they had not graduated from any schools in their day ordinary men so don't let nobody trick you and say oh you ain't been to school i'm telling you what school you need to, we need to go to we need to go to the real school of the holy spirit you got people coming out that's, that's going to these um and i'm not speaking against um these these um academies and these schools but you can get your documentation i think it's something beautiful if you use it the right way I said, but I know a lot, but but that's just because you go to school don't mean you you ready to preach the gospel. The the prep the, the gospel is have to have them being full of the Holy Spirit. Do you know when 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 in the Acts when when they when they was um looking for leaders in the church, uh because some some um widows and and they wasn't being uh, the administrative administration wasn't in order. And you know the requirement was. For them to just say, choose out between you seven men, first thing they have, full of the Holy Ghost. That, that, that's it. Full of the Holy Ghost. That, that, that's a requirement. You got to be, you, not how much intellect you have or how much Bible you know. Uh uh. Full of the Holy Ghost. Why? Because when you full of the Holy Ghost, you are full of truth. That's it. You, 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 you're going to know. You, you, I mean, you're going to know how to treat people. You're going to have the compassion of God. You, you, you're going to know how to talk. You're going to know how to explain yourself. You're going to know how to be obedient. You're going to know how to submit and to surrender to other authorities. You, you're not going to fight and kick and balk and scream and scratch and talk back and, 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 and represent yourself. You're always going to represent the one who granted the authority, which is Christ and his kingdom. That's what we're here for. We, we are members of that body. You know, we make up. We might be the eye, the arm, the leg, the foot, but he's the head. Christ is the head. So we'll never have that, that, that position. Christ is the head, was the head, and always will be the head. So we got to represent and be obedient. Whatever the head say, the body must do. And that is very big, okay? So if you want to go to the school, um, the pastor went to school and, and we was talking and, and he explained, you know, and we had a class with the leaders and he gave shared with us some 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 beautiful um some things that they that he picked up out of the, the, the school and that he went to. And but the most important thing is that we gotta have the Holy Spirit. Oh man. Three, they were lower class people which made them simple working men. Okay, four, but in spite of all of this. Um, the wise religious men marveled and realized that they had been with Jesus. That's that was the bottom line. Okay, they had been with Jesus, and they remain with Christ. You know, do do people when you around people do they know that you've been with Jesus? I mean, can, can they sense that? I'm talking about worldly people. I ain't talking about Christians. I'm talking about um, if you see some people in schools. Let's say you you pass by now, even though you graduated. Let's say you might see somebody in the in a grocery store and, they, and you go over and, and you greet them and stuff in that moment can they tell that you still that you've been with jesus or you still remain in christ or they're going to sense something else and start the old conversation again so this this that's 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 a food for thought okay can, can people understand that we've been in the in, in with jesus i remember when i first started working in the hotel and me and the um the pastor my brother gumby um we kept passing each other. We speak and everything. And one day, I guess he couldn't hold it no more. And, and he came and said, "Hey, brother, can I ask you a question?" I, I said, "Yes." I said, "Yes, sir." He said, 
you, you, you know Christ, don't you? I said, yes, sir, you too. He said, yes, sir, he said, my pastor. So I know it's something different. Yeah. And, and from there, no, a beautiful relationship, a relationship has been growing and still growing. And, and man, I love my pastors. I'll tell you, it's, it's beautiful. And, but somebody should know that you've been around Christ. You know, not saying we're perfect, you know, but something in there should let them know, man, hey, this guy been around Christ. He ain't the same. He don't talk the same. You know, his jokes are even different. I mean, they might be corny, but they clean jokes. I mean, they, they, they're not, I mean, you know, something different should um, jump out on them and say, this person has been with Jesus. All right. Third, third and final is authority and the power in prayer. Okay. You remember um, after the, 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 um, religious leaders and the Sadducees and the priests, all them, when they have threatened them and the, the, and let them go, uh, Peter and John went back to the company of the uh, of the twelve and and, and the followers of Christ. And guess what they did? And they told them about what happened. They told them that that they were threatening them. So man, once again in unity, in the whole congregation lifted up their voice. And they prayed a prayer. And they said they didn't ask for money. They didn't ask for uh, fame. They didn't ask for who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom. Uh, they didn't ask for nothing personal. Only thing they asked, God, give us, behold their threat and scratch out your arm and give us a, a boldness to preach your word. Good God. They, 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 they asked for, and this inspired and, and, and God because he was like, whoa. It's just like when God asked Solomon, Either ask me what you want and I will get granted to you. And Solomon could, well, that was a, a blank check. He could have put asking God for anything, but he didn't use nothing for his personal gain or his personal interest. He asked God to give him wisdom that he may know how to judge God's people correctly. Could God, that got God's attention. God said, since you didn't ask for anything um, personal for yourself, he said, I'm going to give it to you anyway. Riches, long life, eh, all these things. And, and God gave it to him. And, and, and Solomon was a very wise man, okay? Had mistakes, but he was a very wise man because he his, his priority was to do the things um, in the kingdom of God. He put the kingdom of God first before his own pleasures, okay? And that is big. And so when the apostles got it, when, when they was in, found themselves in a, in a um, desperate situation, they lifted up their voice and they asked God to strengthen them. Oh my God. Strengthen them so they can preach the word with more boldness and that's and, and that got god's attention and before the words got through the, with their mouth the bible said that the place where they were standing was shaking and they was and, and, and they were filled again with the holy spirit and now they were more inspired they were they were preaching with more fire as they could so in other words my, i guess my, my point is you is that if god is sent you in his kingdom for labor in his vineyard and he'll call you to do a great work He's going to finish it. He's going to give you everything that we, that we need. We don't have to be afraid. He's going to give us everything that we need. And sometimes we catch ourselves in predicament. Sometimes we find ourselves afraid. And that's when we should go to God and say, God, I, I failed that test. I should have I should have testified to that brother, to that sister. But I, I, I hesitated and I lost my opportunity. Lord, bring it back to me again and, 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 and empower me that I can speak boldly in your name. Oh my God, and take away all the fear because you have not given us the power of uh, the spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. And God would bring that thing back. I remember one time this brother was walking on um, the church and I didn't know, I just saw um, he, he was just walking, walking, walking. And and, and, I was, and, and, I was, and he was like, at that time I didn't know. I'm thinking he was just some, going somewhere close. And I had my family with me. We was going to church this Sunday morning. And he was walking, had his Bible on his arm, and he was just stepping, he was walking hard. And I was like, wow. And, and the Holy Spirit told me, he said, stop, man. I said, brother, you want to ride. And I did, and I hesitated. I hit the brakes, I hesitated. And I started thinking about my own, I'm going to be late, and I'm going to be this and this. And I didn't. And when I got to church, man, it, it beat me down so so bad that I, I, was, I, was so, I, was, I was ashamed. And I was like, God, I fail you. I fail you. I fail you. I said, if you give me the opportunity to bring it back again. I said, God, I will, I will stand on you this time. I, I will stand in your name and I will do that what you have me to do. And so the next Sunday, the brother, I, I, I seen him and man, soon I seen him, I rejoiced. 
because I knew God and he heard me and he brought and I seen his brother again and and I stopped and I said, hey brother, you would like a ride? He said, sure. And he got in, he said, God bless you. I said, God bless you. Said, my, so my name is John. I said, I'm Dennis. It's my wife. It's my daughter. He said, hey, how you doing? God bless you. So I said, you going to church? He said, yeah. I said, yeah. So, and I said, he said, I said uh, where you going to church at? And brother, when he told me where he was walking from, ah, man, it was like 12, 15 miles. And I was like, boo. And then he said, yeah, I leave early because I got to open the church. That's my job to open the church. And his brother got up and left his family and started walking early. And I said, brother, I'm I can, as long as I meet you here every Sunday, I can take you. And then one the last, and he gave, then he gave me an offering to put in our church fan. And I was like, no, brother. We, he said, no. And I, and I put the offering in. And the last time I seen him, brother, he said he was um, praying that God was opening the door to get him a car. And we prayed, and I, and I, and I agreed with him. And we touched and agreed. And I haven't seen a brother since. I think the brother got a car. Thank God I'm blessed him with a car. Because he sure was faithful, brother. He was walking. And man, so if you feel one um, at something, ask God to bring it back to you again. Because God don't want us to fail. He wants us to start learning his ways. So that I'll never forget that experience. And that's why he done it. So if you if you feel in something you didn't uh, obey the Holy Spirit when he was nudging you and inspiring you to do something um, and you didn't, don't, don't, don't be hard on yourself. Just pray and ask God, simple, simple. To God, bring it back to me again. I feel you that time. I want to hear your voice again. Holy Spirit, speak. And this time I will be obedient. Brother and God, we honor that. Amen. Um, in conclusion, I just want to read the bottom part. Um, so, in other words, when a young preacher um, should be dressed with the boldness, with the strength, and with the dynamic of the message of the gospel, okay? And they should know that um, this person has been with Jesus, okay? This should be enough for all them that hear his message to marvel and surrender to the Lord. Even those who set hurdles can be transformed transform to becoming a blessing as it happened to Saul or Tarsus. Amen. I hope this lesson was a blessing to you. Uh, I just want to inspire you guys, man, to man, be it. Ask God to fill you over and over with the Holy Spirit, man. Just ask me to keep giving you a new touch, man. I'm, I'm telling and the boldness to work in his vineyard and his kingdom. And, and, and man, read your word and, and, and you know, read these lessons, brother. And, and write notes down in the preaching on Sunday. There's something to touch you and God speaks to you. Write that one or two things down and go back and just throughout the week and, and feed on that. And, 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 and believe me, uh, with, with with all honesty, well, when, when when the right time comes, the Holy Spirit will come and, and enlighten you and empower you and inspire you in that moment for give you what you need. I mean, I'm a witness. I, I, I know. I can't remember every preaching. I can't remember every lesson that I even taught. I can't remember it. But I know when I find myself in a situation and the time comes when I pray and I ask God to help me, the Holy Spirit remind me and guide me of a word that I heard or a scripture they get a scriptures that get me through that situation that I'm going through. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this day. I thank you again, God, for um, this beautiful study, God. Thank you for the authority. Thank you for equipping us, Lord God. Um, not only preparing us, but also equipping us, Lord God, with, with power, with might, with, with dominion, with authority, God. Only in your name, God. God, I thank you for not leaving us helpless or hopeless, God, but you inspire us through your Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth. I ask you to fill these youth, God, with your Holy Presence, God, with your Spirit, Lord God. I ask you to feed them each and every morning, God, that they make work up looking for you. The true desire to serve in your kingdom and your vineyard, God, to be servants, Lord God, full of faith, Lord God, in you, God, knowing that you are faithful. God, that's when I ask you to take total control of their lives, Lord God, leading God, them, God, in every spirit and truth, giving them a calling, God, let them know that they have a purpose in their life, God, they that's not here, Lord God, by circumstance, Lord God, but you have a, a divine plan for their life, God, and I thank you, and I love you, and I bless you, for in Jesus' name I pray, amen. God bless you, you, enjoy your beautiful week, and I'll see you in the church on Sunday.
In Jesus' name, amen.